It's time for Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Hoot hoot, where are my owls at? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to Movie Fights. We're making that owl phrase a thing. Um, also, it's a very extra furry episode of Movie Fights today. There's a lot of pets in the house, and we want to let you know what's going on. We're trying to raise awareness for uh, Care Rescue LA, and uh, you know what? We have an important person here to drop a little knowledge about Care Rescue LA. Uh, Ms. Jen Sturger. Jen, you want to uh, break down a little bit about what's happening? <laughs> Thank you so much, Al. Uh, yeah, this is a really special movie fights because, you know, we brought a bunch of our adoptables. This is Kiki, your brother Coda's somewhere running around the studio. You'll find, her, <laughs> find him later. Uh, and, you know, this is just such a wonderful opportunity to raise awareness for all the work that we're doing. We just started a Patreon with the help of uh, the wonderful Nick Mundy, who's one of our fosters. And we're trying to raise awareness so that we can go ahead and build some funds up and be able to take care of more animals and not have to turn people away because we just simply can't keep up with the demands of the community right now. So any help you guys can give us today, check out our Patreon. It's Care Rescue LA uh, on Patreon. And I'm sure we'll put the link up a bunch of times. It'll be on my Twitter, Nick's Twitter. I mean, everywhere. It's probably flashing on the screen right now, <laughs> right? Um, I don't see anything flashing on the screen, but uh, yeah, we'll get it there. We'll get it there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll have a puppy cam, a kitty cam. I mean, someone's getting adopted today. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of animals in the house tonight. And uh, Jen, I want to thank you uh, personally because you helped connect me to this little girl right here. Oh. This is my dog, oh. Millie the dog. <laughs> um, hashtag Millie the dog. And I love her. You know, she's such a wonderful dog. When I met this dog, I was like, "This is Hal's dog." This Hal's been in the market for a dog for a while, and it's just like I love, I love playing matchmaker for people and pets. Like it's just my favorite thing to do. So, oh, yeah. oh my god, uh, it's a moment. <laughs> Adopter. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki uh, really likes me. Kiki, do you love Danielle? Um, and I gotta say, uh, you know what? I I saved Millie, but I also think that Millie saved me. That's how it always works. I know, right? Um, Jen, thank you so much. Uh, we're here for a good cause. We're also here for some movie fighting. Let's meet our fighters. You know what, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, you, uh, you know, we believe in you. We believe in you in the booth. All right, so uh, Jen mentioned Mr. Nick Mundy, and here's our old friend Nick Mundy. Good to see you, brother. Hey, thanks, thanks for having me back. Uh, thank you, Screen Junkies and Fandom, yeah. uh, Rick Fandom, uh -huh. um, for, uh, for letting Care Rescue LA uh, come and, you know, Bring some bring some awareness to not just our uh, rescue, but like every rescue. Uh, there's rescues all over the you know. It, sure, this is for Los Angeles, <laughs> but there's rescues all over the uh, country, and uh, there's a lot of animals that need help. This is Leroy. This is Leroy, and uh, he needs a home. This is Mike. He needs a home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also here today, fighting for movies and believing in the good cause, uh, Mike Carlson. And Mike Carlson made a promise that if he gets a question awarded to him, he's going to eat one of these puppy treats that I brought with me. <laughs> mm, I did say I would eat dog treats, but I did not say that I would eat one of those treats. I will I, throw this right now. I want a much. You're eating one. I'm throwing it. I just made that up. One treat for everything, every point he gets awarded. I would hope so. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, cool. But I, um, we shall see. TBD, TBD. <laughs> yes. Mike Carlson, always good to uh, have you here. Thank you Podcaster for me. extraordinaire. Yes, of course. My podcast, Podcast the Ride. <laughs> yes, excellent. Uh, Mike, always good to have you. Thank you. And uh, you know this uh, lady, she is, well, she is a cat fosterer. I am. So, yes. hell yeah, down with the cause. And you, uh, we uh, adore everything she does all over the internet the schmoes, hyper RPG, et cetera. Emma Fife. It's great to be here. Oh, I have yeah. two cats at my house right now. I didn't bring them that are Care Rescue LA Fosters. I didn't um, bring them with me because they just got fixed yesterday, so they're not in a great mood. Uh, but yeah. they're very, very cute. There's a orange girl and an orange boy, and they're really cute, and you should check them out on my Instagram. Their names are Darla and Drew. Uh, actually, did, did Delara name them? Um, maybe. Yeah, because I feel because they came to me from the Mondays. The Mondays, it was like that was their stopover before coming to live with me. We have a lot of cat term. sleepovers now. Yeah. That's what I've been doing for the last uh, two years. Uh, yeah, it's and cat so sleepovers. They all now. They had a sister too, but she got adopted. 
So there's a success story right there. Oh, that's that's awesome. Emma, <laughs> thank you for your good work with animals. You know how, oh, speaking yes. of fixing, I yeah. think we need to fix old Dan Merle over there because <laughs> he doesn't have an animal in his lap. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, Dan, the Dan, we're not going to need a, a facts in this one, so just yeah, hold just on. Animals. <laughs> <laughs> there's no facts. Get, get the okay, no, no facts today. Leroy. All right. Oh, oh I'm shaking. I think he likes it. I think he wants to stay. I think I'm going to ask Leroy. Leroy loves movie fights, oh. and he wants to be in the oh middle of the action. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I will happily oh my gosh. Go. Something will ice his cold, Leroy cold heart. Oh. Dan, any puppy facts for us? <laughs> uh, this is an adorable dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. Puppy fact for today. Yep. Um, the, the Let's see a commenter prove that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh um, and with... Uh, Dan Merle on the Dan Cam. She's the voice of the people. And uh, just an angel sent from heaven above, Danielle Radford. <laughs> Hi, um, so yeah, I am the voice of the people right now. The people th say the puppies are cute. Um, there will be polls up. Obviously, there will be several on Twitter, and they are amazing, and you should uh, do them. But also, the only poll that counts for the show is the one that's on the YouTube. If you're looking for instructions on how to use that, um, go down and click the description below. We will also be able to help you in the chat. Can one of the polls be, are kittens cute or really cute? <laughs> We could probably do it at least online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, great. And uh, Danielle, uh, anything else to add? So uh, Dan and I will be judging, and if we are tied, we go to Danielle with the poll. We'll get the poll any which way, but your <laughs> poll will factor in if Dan and I are tied. Yeah, and we'll be showing it either way um, until we hit to the speed round, and that's when I have my own opinions, and I just don't think I can have opinions today. I think Leroy's the tiebreaker today. I think Leroy's yes. the tiebreaker. Oh my God. Um, and also, please. Join us and talk about this on the hashtag Movie Fights Live. I will be as much as I possibly can looking for all of your memes, um, any kind of fun aside you have, any of your opinions about how things are going. Um, and I will be reading some of those off throughout the show, so please join us on Movie Fights Live. Great. And uh, we'll also be popping over to, we have our, I guess, our version of the Puppy Bowl over by the couch there uh, oh with God. several of our uh, friends. So uh, who's over there? Is Roth? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hi, couch cam. Oh, it's just a menagerie over there. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> The floor's okay. never been cleaner. <laughs> um, so there you have it. And uh, remember, for today's game, the first fighter to four points, to win four points, walks away our victor today. Ooh, and um, uh, several of our questions may be a little bit animal-themed to go uh, with the fun and hijinks we have happening here. So uh, buckle up. Here comes Movie Fights. Chris, do me a favor and drop the package. Prepare to die. Ladies and gentlemen. No. It's main event time. Finish him! Yes! Oh, yeah. Uh, you're not going to find a better package anywhere. Question number one. Okay, this is definitely uh, pet centric. Pitch a new entry in the Air Bud franchise. Pitch a new entry in the Air Bud franchise. Is this question gonna pop up? There it is! Yeah. Air Bud, we know him, we love him. He catches sick air. Pitch a new entry. Uh, we're gonna start with our good friend, Nick Mundy. Uh, real quick, aren't we supposed to be standing? Um, oh, uh, no, no, the po we had podiums and there was standing for a moment. Um, we uh, put the kibosh on that. Yep. Okay. okay. The people voted. No standing. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, good to know. Um, kind of messed me up. Uh, well, okay. So, Airbud. After so many entries into the Airbud franchise, we are exploring new and fantastical themes. For we've already determined that Airbud and his type of dog are the most dominant species because they're so good at sports. So naturally, when the end of the world happens, excuse me. When the end of the world happens, uh, you know, Airbud and his kind and dogs have now taken over like Planet of the Apes. And they are the dominant species. Uh, humans are nothing but like, I would call them pets. And they're living, they're just, they're just treated like, you know, like animals, like they're treated like animals. And so now, Airbud, the, 
a dog, a suburban affluent dog family has adopted a new human and one of their kids is playing sports and he's not that good at sports. And that's when they adopt a new human named Bud who's really good at sports. Whoa. So what this movie describes and just tells is about the story about a human named Bud who gets some air. This is Air Bud Apocalypse Now. <laughs> Total role reversal there. Okay, Nick it's, it's kind of like Duality of Man. A little bit, a little bit. We'll learn more about that. All right, Mike Carlson, what is your foray into the Air Bud world? All right, I'd like to start out with a quote from my amazing pitch. <laughs> Best pitch, I would also say. But <laughs> there ain't no rule that says the dog can't do virtual reality. All right? I'm talking about ready canine player one. <laughs> Whoa. Okay? We're talking eSports. You know me. I'm a futurist. I'm a guy who likes to think forward, okay? I don't want to play these old, boring sports. I want to take it into a new realm, into a virtual realm. I want Airbud doing all the fun things like racing a car, falling in love with a human woman. I want to do all the wonderful things we saw in the film Ready Player One, but with a dog, and a dog who does it with style and grace and amazement. Let's be honest, we can do anything we want here. We can meet Lassie, we can meet Rin Tin Tin, we can meet Toto, we can meet a sexy human woman the dog falls in love with, all right? We can do it all. Ready, canine, player one. Wow. Uh, a parenthesis, Air Bud. <laughs> That's really Air good. Bud. Yeah, good. Yeah, and uh, it's already a very quotable movie. Sure. Thank you, yes. Sure. Okay, Emma Fife. All right, so here is the thing about the Air Bud franchise is Air Bud has constantly been reinventing himself. He's played pretty much every sport on the planet. He's got puppies that go off and do their own sports. So I think that what we really need to do is bring Air Bud back to his roots with a good old-fashioned comeback story. You see Air Bud, the, the dog from the original film, Buddy, he has fallen on some hard times, all right? He was really uh -huh. hot there for a while, uh, maybe got a little too big for his britches, got into some dog drugs, uh, maybe has a former arrest on his record. And he's he's fallen on some hard times. Things did not go well with his wife, Molly. Uh, and then he's brought back into the game. Again, this is about Air Bud getting back to his roots. He's an, he's an old, retired dog at this point, recovering drug addict, probably. Wow. And, uh, and, and he... He reconnects with Josh, the human boy from the first few Air Bud oh, films. Oh, someone looked up something. They eventually like, rode off and he went to college. Uh, he reconnects with Josh. So again, we're, we're really getting it back to what Air Bud is all about. And he has to come back to the basketball arena for one last stand to revolutionize the game of basketball and get back to where it all began in Air Bud, back in the Budness. Wow, three very, <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, um, uh, we'll explore that. Okay, three very different films that will never get made. Uh, fight it out, you guys. These are the most depressing pitches I've ever heard. A post-apocalyptic future and a like a drug addicted no, this dog. This is a comeback story, this man. This is sad. Post-apocalyptic future. I totally agree with you. It's sad, but again, I am pitching a comeback story. And on top of that, we have so many franchises now that are so concerned with constantly reinventing themselves and appealing to a new generation of people. Why not? create a film that speaks to the nostalgia factor that we got going on nowadays and tugs at the heartstrings of the people that were originally into Airbud <laughs> and made the film and the franchise itself such a success. I don't want to see a junky dog on the street. <laughs> no one wants it's, to see that. It's, That's it's sad. It's flashbacks to that. It's all about how he comes back mm. from that. It's like, Who wants it flashbacks a, in a movie? It is. A, everybody likes flashbacks. Oh, okay. What my movie is, is, is a movie about wonderment and amazement about a human who can play basketball really well. But who doesn't want to see that? No one's ever seen that ever. And this movie <laughs> is about a guy, a human, even... who plays basketball really well against a bunch of dogs. I would argue that we've seen one or two humans play basketball really well, just like uh, in life, okay, well, in, the, in the movies. Well, excuse me, Emma, but if I was doing your pitch, what I would do is take the Rocky Balboa, you know, uh, route, and then Air Bud's uh, wife, uh, he loses her to cancer, and he um, opens up an Italian restaurant no, that refers. No, no, that's how I would do your I'm idea. Don't do with that. The, I'm going with the happy reunion in the ending, where he and Molly get back together, and they get back, and he reconnects with his kids. And again, it's a very uplifting tale of you know being a has been and overcoming the odds, and to realize that you are still relevant this even is... 20 years into your career. No, this is crazy. <laughs> First of all, there's so many questions about your pitch. Like, do the dogs talk in this universe? Yeah. Well, how do they talk? What happened there? 
What? And did dogs rise up and uh, like start putting us in like prisons and yeah, stuff? Yeah. And now they found a what human. What do you mean? Yeah. You didn't say it. I'm pitching yeah. things now. It's I'm like you're disagreeing so then, with what I'm saying. So then let me ask you, my girl, son, about your pitch. Then. Go ahead. In, in it's yours, airtight. Do the do the animals talk in your film? Do they talk? Well, they can in virtual reality because they've developed a thing to put on the the animal's throat sure. that senses the bark and can and decipher what they mean and listen, in English. I'm not going to argue that that Ready Player One would have been immensely better if it had been about a dog, but it's still Ready Player One, which is a mediocre I'm film right. also, full of also, references. Also, Ready that Canine wants. Player One, the book was so much better than the movie. Like, well, I'm writing the script to this movie, so it's going to be a lot better. Okay, I'm adapting from the book, but also I'm adapting from my brain, which is much better than the book and the movie. I think your movies, uh, I, I hate to say, rely too much on nostalgia, where my movie is about a human who's good at basketball, my which has never happened before. <laughs> my movie taps into nostalgia, but it is not reliant entirely upon nostalgia. Uh, no, it's taking a hero, which people love, and then putting them in a situation that wasn't expected, which people hate. Have you? Not, I mean, that people like their heroes to be exactly where they think they're going to be in their heads for the last 20 I years. I mean, some people like I mean, that. I mean, your Air Bud might as well throw his lightsaber on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's I agree with that. I mean, this hey, that was one of my favorite Luke Skywalker moment, moments that ever happened. So there is definitely a demographic. Again, can we not br bring up lightsabers. Is that, well, here's the thing: is that is is going off of this idea that you guys are both pitching these earbuds that are very much for a new generation. Mm. It's like post-apocalyptic. It's esports. It's whatever. There is still the appeal for the new generation of the people who felt like they couldn't connect with the perfect buddy, and now Buddy has gone through some hard times. We realize that he is he is vulnerable and he has flaws, just like the rest of us, but that doesn't stop him from being a hero at the end of the day. Emma, Emma, what, Emma what kind of drugs was uh, Buddy using on the street? Uh, he got into some uh, uh, some real hard puppy chow. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, puppy chow means heroin, though. Let's be honest. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. It's heroin. Let's We're not, talking about heroin. If they're doing heroin, let's not hide from it. Let's be adults. Yeah. Still, though, I feel like people want heroes to stay exactly the same over 25 years. We don't want to deviate from that. That's why, with my movie, it's dogs who have a human for a pet who's really good at basketball. Who would you cast as this human uh, for the pet, Nick Mundy? Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael, okay. So, wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 55 year old <laughs> Michael Jordan. It's in between <laughs> golf rounds. Okay. okay. They shoot this movie in uh, three days. This is crazy. In Augusta. Now. Three days? It takes at least a week to make a movie, okay? Well, yeah, when it's all CGI and virtual reality like yours, okay. I want a real movie about grit. Set right, in Augusta. Here. Can I give you a little a scene from the movie? <laughs> yes, yeah. give us a little more of your movie. Okay, Mike. there right now he's in a like uh, Airbud is in a crazy race. Like it's a crazy race in all these crazy cars. So a dog is getting to drive a car, which is awesome. And all of a sudden the bad guy who is played by let's just say Michael Jordan, okay? Uh, He's making busy. his return to acting, uh, he attacks Airbud, and then Airbud is saved by Clifford the Big Red Dog. All right, isn't okay. that cool? And then after he wins a race, Airbud kisses a human woman. It, okay, it is cool. Okay, so are you saying it's... there's interspecies love? But in it this doesn't movie. matter when you're in the Oasis. <laughs> okay, but, but again, it's okay. But, playing field. But I think okay. that then that Mike, what's happening is that okay, like. Yeah, I get it. It's it's Airbud. It's Ready Player One, but that's mm. what it is. Airbud right. ultimately is a sports movie that has Thank a dog you, in Emma. it, and this is not a sports movie. Emma's I right. Disagree. Just like my movie is a sports movie, and let me pitch a scene to you. Uh, one of the dog children uh, is not very good at basketball, or his team is, and they're like, "Oh, we need another player," and that's when they call Bud, their human, to play on the team, which seems preposterous. But then he's really good at basketball, and they help. <laughs> Make this your win. final thoughts. It's a human playing basketball <laughs> with dogs. Great. It's great to be back. Uh, excellent. Uh, Mike, any anything else to say? Wrap it up. Yeah, look, we've gone everywhere with the Airbud franchise, and then they obviously spun off into Space Buddies, and there's a whole different franchise. Is that true? That's 100% true. They went into space. It doesn't Dan? even have to be sports. Dan will fact check me later, but Dan, God, he knows I'm right. Dan knows I know my Airbud. 
Uh, but we want to take this to the next level. We want to unlock the possibilities of Airbud completely. And what better way than to going to everyone's favorite virtual reality realm, the Oasis? All right. All right. Thank you, Mike Carlson. And Emma Fife. Since Airbud has branched out into so many different sports stories already, I think that, again, it's really about bringing Airbud back to its roots, which is about a dog that was a basketball sensation. And this is the story of a dog who was a sensation, who got washed up, and who's going to rise up again and be the hero that we all knew and love, even when everyone lost faith in him, thanks to his good pal Josh, who brings him back into the game. Time! All right. Dan She's Merle, you got a, a, your, your hands are full with cuteness. Oh, yeah. um, you got any facts <laughs> over boy. there? I do. We've got, you know, Air Bud uh, played basketball, he played football, he played soccer, he played baseball, he, <laughs> he did volleyball. He played every freaking sport. Yes, he did. And then there was the Air Buddies uh, spinoff series of films, which did include going to space, <laughs> so that space is buddies, factually yes. accurate. Um, yeah, Air Bud has done many things uh, in his long and, and varied career on mm -hmm. screen. Dan, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Dan. All right, so uh, yeah, three uh, three very different movies. Uh, we had uh, yeah, th there were some compelling elements in each of them. Uh, interesting. I don't know. Michael Jordan might be a hard get. Um, 55-year-old billionaire. I don't know if he wants to play. Um, a, a, if you a, a, bet him that he can't do the movie, then he would do it. Okay, I wish you brought that up while we were still debating. Oops. Here we are. Um, uh, Mike, uh, so it sounded basically like, Nick, you, yours was like Planet of the Apes, except with dogs and humans. Mm, playing basketball. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mike, uh, you were uh, basically pitching a shot-for-shot -shot remake <laughs> of... <laughs> Ready Player One. Mm. The the one yeah. that I found the most compelling was Emma's story. It reminded me, it reminded me of um, uh, Mickey Rourke and the Wrestler, mm -hmm. except the Air Bud version of the Wrestler. Yeah. I wanted. That's the thing I wanted to see the most. That grittiness. I wanted that story <laughs> of a dog overcoming drugs. For some reason, that appealed to my sense of humor the most. It was the most interesting. So I go with Emma Fife. Mm. Dan. Very different versions of, uh, and, I, and I was on everybody's, uh, I was behind everybody at one point or another. Mm -hmm. But I think where I landed was, in a weird way, what I considered at first to be the most outlandish concept that, strangely, <laughs> as we kept going, was more and more fully fleshed out, whereas the other ones I felt fell apart a little more. I'm going to go with Nick. <laughs> okay. Interesting. There we go. Apocalypse so, um, hmm. ap Apocalypse Air Bud. Um, Millie, hmm. which one did you like? <clears throat> Shh. Um, okay, what's uh, the polls say, Danielle? Okay, so the polls have it, ooh, with 43% Ready Player One Air Bud, oh. with 29% Washed Up Air Bud Returns, and with 26% oh, Bud the Adopted Human Player. All right, so we are all tied up 1-1-1. One, one, wow. one. That Dang. means we go to our newly established tiebreaker. Oh. Danielle, your opinion. Wow. Um, oh, how many judges do you guys have? <laughs> Don't worry I'm about it. I'm two of a judge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, again, I thought that all of these were uh, incredibly great arguments. Hmm. Um, I have to say that um, I was most interested in washed up Air Bud Returns. Hmm. So I'm going to have to go with Emma. All Emma right. Fife <laughs> takes the point. <laughs> Millie, which one do you it like? It was the best idea. <laughs> all right. Um, Emma, nicely done. Thank um, you. Mike, Nick, good luck getting funding for your projects. Okay. All right. You just bet Michael Jordan. Uh, hey, can you hey Chris, movie? can we take a look at the puppy cam real quick? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I feel like we should just be doing VO over that shit. I know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. We should just cut to we that. We don't even yeah, need to be on camera. camera. Uh -huh. This would be much more popular than movie fights in general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's oh, true. The yeah. Ratings gold. We okay. slowly strip away showing the fighters, then we strip away <laughs> hearing the fighters, and it's just, eventually it's just it's dogs. just dogs and cats. But we still play the let them fight montage. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you Cast for that. Cool. Let's go to question number two. If you were going to cast an already famous animal as James Bond. <laughs> Who would it be and why? <laughs> so we know Daniel Craig is going to be stepping away soon. Um, Idris Elba said he's not going to do it. Uh, so who's it going to be? 
Who's it gonna be? What animal? Uh, ready Player Two. Let's start with Mike Carlson. Okay. The, I hate. I don't want to hype myself up here, but this might be the greatest answer I've ever given in the history of movie fights. So. <laughs> All right, James Bond. We need an actor who is suave, debonair, handsome, can move, but also someone with a bit of menace. Somebody who can get stuff done. Ooh. I am picking the most obvious animal answer there is. I'm of course talking about. Montecare. <laughs> you said, look it up! The, the Siegfried and Roy tiger from their, first of all, rest in peace uh, to this tiger, but the, this was the tiger uh, that worked with Siegfried and Roy for many, many years, and he did so many live shows. He's a great performer, um, but also he is the tiger that attacked Roy, <laughs> which is, side note, not his fault. Roy also says that, that he was not attacking him, he was trying to help him. So, look. We can't hold that against him. Anyway. All right, and his name is Montecare? Uh, I think I mispronounced it, and I have to look it up again. Hold on. All right, uh, we'll get back to you on that. Emma Fife, who do you got? All right, when you think about James Bond, you think about somebody that's got to wear a lot of hats, metaphorically speaking and actually speaking. What? So there is only one animal for the job, and that is the Instagram famous Doug the Pug. Doug the Pug <laughs> is, uh, with 3.5 million Instagram followers, totally fits the uh, moniker we have today of casting social media influencers in roles that they maybe don't necessarily deserve. But Doug the Pug absolutely does. He is the most fashionable dog on the internet, and James Bond is one of the most fashionable characters in all of cinema. Again, you gotta be able to rock a lot of different looks. You gotta be able to have your, like, nice, we're going on a tropical island and hanging out with some babes kind of look. Mm -hmm. You gotta have your like undercover spy kind of look, but ultimately what you need is an animal that looks good in a tuxedo, mm -hmm. and that, my friends, is Doug the Pug. All right, a handsome pug coming from Emma Fife. Nick Mundy, who do you cast? You know, uh, I haven't been on movie fights for some odd two and a half years, or maybe longer. Um, but there were two things that brought me back. One, Care Rescue LA, and doing this episode. Mm -hmm. And then two was the question, if you were going to cast an already famous animal as James Bond, who would it be and why? Mm. Because the answer is as clear as day, and I'm surprised no one has said it already. Because you want someone with style, mm. you want someone who's debonair, who's a man too. about town, mm -hmm. uh, mm. sexy as hell, and a vicious killer. <laughs> That's why I'm choosing Snagglepuss. <laughs> Uh, he's a well-dressed gadabout uh, who goes to all the fancy parties, mm. and he's a vicious, deadly killer. Mm. He has the cuffs, he has the bow tie, he's ready to party, and he's ready to kill. Snagglepuss, as made famous by the Laugh Olympics? Yes. Okay, there you go. One of Hanna-Barbera's drug-addled creations, okay. and also the future James Bond. Um, wow, a Vegas showman, an influencer, and an, uh, an animated icon. <laughs> Fight it out. Okay, well, I would first of all like to point out that what Snagglepuss is uh, animated. Again, the, the, the parameters of this were not entirely clear, but I, you would then, I guess, would you be inserting animated Snagglepuss into the existing James Bond universe, or would just be animating James I Bond? I still have no idea who your character is. Okay. Okay, with, um, but to, to that question, though, uh, would you be, um, who framed Roger rabbiting it, or would James Bond be entirely Show animated? Show that picture again. <laughs> that might be too hard. Yeah, that might be a challenge. Oh, yeah, that picture, can't. what what that was. Okay. Okay, um, so, so who framed yeah. Roger Rabbit? Yeah, you just take so it. That's, so a guy, okay. oh, so a guy's gonna wear like a green screen mask yeah, on his head. No, it's a, it's, it's Snagglepuss. It's a, it's a pink guy, it's a pink cat with a bow tie and a collar and... <laughs> but that's a dude's that's hand. That's a person. Sure. <laughs> that's like a dude's That hand. seems less fun, <laughs> let's be honest. Like, he should be full Snagglepuss. If you're saying it's, it's that, it sucks. No, it's full Snagglepuss. It's not full Snagglepuss. Oh, if yeah, it's human it's hands, it's not full Snagglepuss. It's, okay, that, yeah. I just a rules clarification. Nick yes. did not specify the Photoshop. So. <laughs> but he just confirmed the Photoshop. That's why yeah, we're. Was, that's why we're. Look up. And also this okay. this tiger, Mike, that you're Montecor, yes. Montecor. Montecor. He's 
dead, right? Yes, but I said in the email to Mike, Screen Junkies, I said, if we can use deceased animals, of course I'm going to choose Montecore. And Mike, they said, why is yes. he dead? Sure. Because the tiger lifespan is only 17 to 25 years, and the tiger was Was, he, was he destroyed because he It was not. Attacking. No, that's not true. The tiger died well, in 2014, and, and 2009 and, is and, when the accident just, happened. Because, listen, if, if we were going with dead animals, there there was a very famous uh, Cecil the Lion, which definitely crossed my mind in terms of consideration. Well, then you should have How, chosen Cecil the Lion. No, no, no. <laughs> no, and here's why I shouldn't have. Because, because... <laughs> The problem with wild animals is James Bond, he's got to be able to blend in, man. He's got to be able to get into no. those hip parties. Nobody's going to let Montecor a tiger just walk into their party. Montecore did 10 years of shows in Vegas with no incident. One time it screws up. We've all seen the Christian Bale tape. One time on set, <laughs> you get a little out of control and you bite someone. That happens, okay? 10 years of consistency means that Montecore is professional enough and suave enough and deadly enough to do the job as James Bond. Snagglepuss is a lover. <laughs> Both men and women. He can infiltrate into Fidel Castro's hideaway or some bluesy, you know, uh, you know, person that James Bond has to get clues from that ends up dying, which is hmm. problematic to say the least. Uh, Snagglepuss can get laid nonstop, which he does. That's you don't I... think Montecore can pull it down? No, because he's too busy attacking M. <laughs> no way. He would never attack M. Oh, he, he definitely ripped off Q's balls. Montecore is, was in Vegas. <laughs> Montecore in Vegas every night. You don't think Montecore was going backstage? No. Men, if women, other tigers, if, human if women? The question was, Listen. who would be the best animal representation of Liberace? I'm right there with you, because sure. that's what I would pitch. And I'm confused that that's not the question. But uh, Snagglepuss, even, um, he's... He's handsome. He's smooth. He's a vicious killer. He's a he's not a killer. He's a right, no, hold on, hold on. He's never he's a representation of Tennessee Williams after he was investigated by the Un-American Activities in 1955. Again, this, but we're also talking so about so subversive. We're also talking about an animal that is fulfilling an acting role, which obviously, when you take somebody like Doug the Pug, who's used to being on camera all the time, now you don't get to 3.5 million Instagram followers by just like hanging out in the back and never taking a picture. True that. Again, that is just that can fit into any scenario and really embody that everything that is international man of mystery about James Bond. Emma, <laughs> Emma, that your person is an influencer and influencers aren't actors. And Doug the Pug would be, let's be honest, Doug the Pug would be like the George Lazenby James Bond. It would be one off and Are then we forget about the George best James Lazenby. Bond film? No way. All right, I'm going to uh, I want to throw a question out there. Sure. I'd like you uh, each to tell us what the title of your new Bond film would be. Okay. And um, give us just a couple of uh, couple sentences of plot. A couple sentences so a little plot description and the title and we'll start with uh, the gentleman that started it all off. <laughs> Talking about this round, Mike Carlson. All right. Mine would be called James Bond Monte Carlo Adventure. <laughs> and just a few words about the plot. All right. Uh, obviously, it takes place in Monte Carlo. Yeah. Uh, there are, there's a, a gang of evil elk <laughs> that have infiltrated Monte Carlo, and they're sort of dealing with drugs and money or whatever, and Montecor has to go undercover as an elk. <laughs> for over an hour in the film and he has to dress up like an elk and he infiltrates them he obviously seduces some elk uh, in the process uh, and after that how graphic that, will the elk Montecore sex be? Uh, it'll be very tasteful okay good, good. Uh, it'll be sort of a lot of like drapes and stuff it's not gonna be I don't this is PG-13 we don't wanna make the broccoli family upset <laughs> great uh, so yeah and at that point uh, then uh, Blofeld comes back but this time Blofeld is a blowfish oh so okay, there's a like lot of different twist. animals, yeah. Nice. All it makes sense. Great. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Emma Fife? Uh, this one is called uh, James Bond, Age of the Fur Baby. And it is a, uh, basically what it is, is it is a James Bond story populated by Doug the Pug, who is playing the role of James Bond. Grumpy Cat is going to be playing the role of M. And essentially what it is, is if you can imagine the opening credits, instead of like naked silhouettes of women, it's just scrolls of Instagram animals going through. And it is about, uh, an Instagram influencer animal who has, uh, 
taken over, uh, who has hacked into the Instagram algorithm oh. and completely changed it. So it's James Bond's job to figure out which one of the many animal influencers who are going to appear in the film, such as Lil Bub or mm. uh, Maru the cat and Maru the dog mm. uh, and uh, Boo, that little Pomeranian. It's and, and it's all about James Bond trying to get in there and solve the mystery of who hacked into Instagram and has deleted mm. all of the animal's followers. And in the process, he'll travel to many exotic locations and wear lots of different adorable costumes. Okay, oh, great. Uh, we have the age of the fur baby. Uh, Nick Mundy, a little bit about your film. Yeah, just real quick, no offense to uh, Emma, but no one's going to watch a movie on Instagram TV. Um, so this is Quantum of Stage Right, even. Uh, <laughs> where Foghorn Leghorn has taken over the con new Confederate States mm. of America. Mm. Uh, he's blown up the CIA and the United States' spy infrastructure. That's why the Queen and M has to send Snagglepuss 007 to America to infiltrate the new southern colonies and stop the Foghorn Leghorn from taking over the rest of the United States of America. I'll say Nick. Also, 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 yeah. uh, there's like nine shots of him getting out of a beach slow motion in those like bike shorts. Mm. But to be fair, he's. he's, he's Time! <laughs> All right, there you have this it. Stuff's wow. Anyway. Uh, some, some of the, maybe the three greatest entertainment related animals we've uh, come yes. to know. Dan, yes. facts, and when, while you're at it, why don't you tell us who you, your sure. thoughts on the battle? Uh, Manticore was around for about 11 years after the uh, incident oh. with uh, Siegfried and Roy. He was actually Good. only about, uh, yeah, he was, he was pretty young, and, and indeed, Roy was very, very. Uh, Defensive of the tiger said that it was uh, the fault was on him and, mm -hmm. and loved the the animals and continued to stick up for uh, Manticore. Did you say it through a voice box? Life. What's that? Did you say it through a voice box? I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, Nick, you brought up an interesting thing, which was about uh, if we were picking uh, an animal to represent Liberace. Uh, my pick would be Templeton from the animated Charlotte's Web, and I really don't know if there's another answer to that question. <laughs> that's a that's a good. That is a very good answer. I don't know. Yeah, I think you win. I think it might yeah. be Paul Lind. Yes. It's Paul Lind. Yeah. <laughs> and as for my choice, I, I gotta say, if we if we were going just on selection of character and reason for picking that character, I'm so sorry, Leroy. Uh, I would go with Nick. However, when we got to mm. the pitch round or the pitch portion, I feel like Mike won me over. That that felt like the best hybrid between character and Bond mm. and movie. Sure. So I'm actually gonna go with Mike. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's no need to. Oh, I thought there was, there's, okay. there's more votes. There's more. There's ten more votes before we decide who <laughs> yes. wins. There, ten, there are ten more votes. I still, uh -huh. I still don't know the rules. So, uh, Emma, I, I found that you, uh, it it kind of lacked urgency. The deletion of Instagram sure. pictures. Uh, I, I, and actually, that might be doing the world a favor in some cases. <laughs> but um, I love hugs. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think that uh, knocks you out. And then. Uh, yeah, I I agree that Montecor going undercover as an elk and making love to elks. I mean, that's that that's hot. That's action packed. Yeah. Um, and uh, Nick, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if uh, Snagglepuss uh, he'd break into Fidel Castro's hideout, but Fidel Castro is no more. Oh. Anyway, I'm going. I'm going. Mike Carlson as well. Thank Mike, you. you get the point. Uh, Danielle, what did uh, what did the pollsters say? All right. Well, in the poll, sorry, there's, there's a cat. There's a cat trying to get over Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is what's happening. Um. So, um, for the polls, 51 percent for Snagglepuss. Mm. <laughs> Twenty. 27% wow. for Manticore and 20% for Doug the Pug. And also, please keep following us over on the Movie Fights Live uh, hashtag because lots of people are sharing images of their rescues and it's oh, cool. Oh, that's right. That's nice. Nice. Yeah, awesome. and all of their pets and stuff. So if y'all want more pets than you can possibly handle, please share those there <laughs> and, and keep tagging us that's on great. there. <laughs> oh, that's Very great. great. You know, uh, <laughs> Millie's been such a good girl. It's treat time for Millie. And Carlson, yeah, he just Carlson goes one. Mike, do you want it? Do you want um, a meatless dog treat? Uh, save it for after the show. <laughs> okay. Um, can we get a shot of the puppy cam? There they are. Yay! Yay. Oh, like that's Lon! Look at Lon with a puppy on his lap. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. Adorable. So, so it is Emma one, Mike one, Nick yet to score, but uh, he is uh, bringing the, the funny. Let's see. Uh, oh, you guys. Uh, it's a blind fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta put these on. Yes, let's put on the headphones and see what the blind fight has they in store pick for a us. Name first. Oh, they gotta pick a name first. All oh. right. What does that mean? Stop the tape. Oh. oh yeah. Here we go. Millie, would you sit in that chair like a person? Good girl. Oh. Oh, uh, Millie. Oh. All right. Go ahead and pick one. Oh, this is who we're arguing again for, or something? Yes. Okay. I mean, do you want me to hand? Yeah. Uh, there's only one left, so that's yeah. what I got. <laughs> Do we look? Yeah. Fling that my way. Oh, okay. I don't know what this is. There you go. Thanks. I don't either. All, All right. right, you will see. Um, so, uh, what do, what does yours say? Goofer. Goofer. Mine says Sandra. And that, okay. Mine says Phil. All right, let's put on the cans and see what's happening right. in this round. <laughs> I have no idea what's going they on. Might not be working. What? Fifty Shades of Grey. People think that just because we're puppets, our sex lives are whimsical and cartoonish. But let me ask you this. Is a 4,000 square foot dungeon complete with whips, paddles, gag balls, and a f bucket whimsical? Hmm? Uh, oh, mother exclamation point. You know that movie with Jennifer Lawrence? Oh boy, I was so f***ed up on sugar sticks when I saw that shit. Can you imagine it with puppets? Oh, I think it would melt brains. Um, any Nicolas Cage movie. I mean, his acting teacher was a puppet, so it would be a pretty easy transition. So let's go with Face Off. Puppet John Travolta swaps felt faces with puppet Nick Cage. I'm not even sure if that could make it any weirder, but it would definitely make it better. Okay, we replaced James Bond with animals. Now we're replacing actors with puppets. Uh, and, felted friends. Uh, mm. AKA felted friends. Mm. But these were puppets. They, I they guess were okay so. With yeah, puppets. I guess they're okay with the term puppets. Yes. Uh, so, Emma, yeah. you have face off. Yeah. Start us but off. But either way, I mean, Phil makes a great point that honestly, like Nick Cage, that's practically a puppet already. But can you imagine you got the nice face swap, as he said, with the puppet? Because. The thing is, is when you take an actor that, I, I, in my opinion, you just replace Nick Cage himself with a puppet because he already has that kind of like stiff and stilted style of acting. So why not, why not embrace it entirely and just go full puppet, Nick Cage, face off, National Treasure, any Nick Cage movie, done. Got it. Okay, so we have uh, Nick, a lot of Nick Cage talk replacing the uh, cast of Face Off. Nick Mundy. Um, my my answer my. Answer is Mother, a movie I've I've seen uh, a lot, uh, directed by Darren Aronofsky, uh, and I believe it was about Satan and and uh, you know duality of man. I think Millie and, knows yeah. more and, about and, Mother. And then and then the reason why puppets would be better is because. It's a Darren Aronofsky movie, which I've seen, and those <laughs> movies are always like really screwed up. So it'd be cool if it was with puppets. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll hear more from you shortly. Mike Carlson. Obviously, Sandra said Fifty Shades of Grey, and I completely agree. It was what exactly popped into my head when I heard the question. Let's be honest, folks. Most of us want to see Fifty Shades, but we cannot handle it. It's too graphic. It's too dirty. We want something that's a lot softer so that we can go and be comfortable in the theater. I want to be able to take my family, my mom and my dad, okay? Puppets make that easy, so we're not actually having to watch human beings engage in this type of behavior. We're watching puppet puppets. It's much safer. It's much better. Therefore, we can go even farther with the graphicness of the movie. I think this is going to make the Fifty Shades movie accept, uh, accessible to everyone of people of all ages, and I think that the franchise, quite frankly, will skyrocket because of it. But if you make uh, Fifty Shades of Grey accessible to an entire uh, general audience, including children, then aren't you taking away what Fifty Shades of Grey is all about, which is... I agree. That is good. That is not a, No, that is not a good thing. The point <laughs> of Fifty Shades of Grey is that it is for people who mm -hmm. are 
trying to. Not anymore. To, it, no, the, but I think but the again, bigger question is the the cleanliness of puppets in erotic situations. Yeah, uh, I worry about that too. It doesn't doesn't seem that sterile. Sure. Uh, what, also, puppets don't seem sterile. What are you talking about? Well, if there's say what you mean, buddy. It's <laughs> like <they're>, ejaculate. <laughs> there's a lot of. What? That's clinical. It is there, clinical. There's but a, I didn't lot, care there's for a it. lot of uh, body fluids and and such. And the other thing, how dare you say a puppet is better than Nicolas Cage? How dare you? I, I I think more that it's like Nick Cage already in his heart is a puppet. So we just want to embrace that and go full stop with it. But Nick Cage is more ridiculous than a yes, puppet. Let's yeah. be honest. So he's better than a puppet. And then also mother. With an exclamation point, hey, hey, is, hey, hey. is already hey. fun because that's that's fun exclamation point. Puppets have no, exclamation mother, points. Mother is not fun, and also if you put puppets in. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, as, and mother is, as we all know, a couple's relationship is tested when uninvited guests arrive at their home. And okay, Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer are great, but <laughs> wouldn't it be great if they were puppets? As as Satan comes into their house, I think is one of the uninvited guests. Uh, Harvey R. Bedem. Who? What? Uh, is also a guy. Harvey R. Harvey R. Van Damme. Yeah. yeah. So the, the the thing about Jean Claude Van Damme being in this movie is that it's great, but like a puppet doing Jean Claude Van Damme splits and karate. Uh, there's karate in this movie. No, Look, probably we, not. We are so uptight about sexuality in this country. I feel that a Fifty Shades of Grey puppet movie would slowly ease us into the way of being a completely comfortable with our own sexuality nation. Or would that completely stunt our, no, our growth of opposites. being comfortable, especially with female sexuality within this nation? That is the point of Fifty Shades of Grey, is it is women embracing their sexuality. Problematic AF, I am not going to lie, but it was mm. a real sexual awakening for a lot of women to really delve into these erotic fantasies. And, and the, you put puppets in it, it's not about women anymore. Well, they're women puppets. Speaking of women's sexuality... <laughs> There's some of that in Mother. Uh, and I think it would be enhanced with uh, puppets. And also, a puppet would be better than Jennifer Lawrence. Whoa, what? Whoa. Because, but hold on. Satan and you Emma, I haven't heard yeah. as much uh, from you Listen, about feel, uh, Face Off like, and why the puppets would enhance that. Well, because that. again, I, I feel that you know you have you have Nick Cage and he is yes, this actor that, that is often in these sort of ridiculous situations. So you take this like high intensity thriller sort of action story with Face Off and you put it in the from the perspective of this puppet and suddenly you are it's almost like you are more accepting of this crazy situation that is happening. You know what I mean? Except science has already proven humans can take their face and put on another human's face. Science has proven that. But do you know how hard it is to deftly cut felt and then and then sew it back on? It's going to no, look terrible. Have you terrible. ever made a no, puppet? It's, 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 it's really yeah. not that challenging. My puppets are great. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's very easy to remove a puppet's head and put it on another puppet. That is not called head off. It's called face off. No. So you'll see the stitching. You'll see the stitching. Also, if you have a bad seamstress, you'll see the stitching. Also, mother is surreal and disturbing. And those type of situations, if there was a puppet, there would be more so. <laughs> okay, uh... Also, Emma. Danzig's best song is Mother. I Finally. believe that's featured in it. Finally, a topic you know something about. Yeah. Uh, Emma, Danzig. give us your final thoughts here. Again, I'm just saying, you're going to get a great puppet face swap. We're going to hire the best seamstresses in all of Hollywood to do a deft little sewing. And it's going to completely change sort of the, the face of that movie, but, but bring it forward in a whole kind of new light. All right. Thank you, Emma. Nick, um, do you want to uh, read us? Uh, no. I, no. <laughs> My mother is great, and so is mother, and so are puppets. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Mike Carlson. Uh, my movie will solve all the sexual problems in America. All right. Time. Uh, Dan was, uh, I mean, uh, Nick gave, already gave us a lot of mother facts <laughs> uh, right off of he IMDb. Did. Yes, he did indeed, yes. And I believe it was from the fandom wiki. Oh, <laughs> nicely done. Thank you for, thank you for using that's, the fandom wiki. True. Yes. Um, yeah, no, nothing to report there? No, not really. Okay, great. What so, does it matter if there was? Yeah, <laughs> right? Ah. Oh. Uh, makes sense. You know what matters? Our furry friends. Yes. So, uh, Nick, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that's kind of an unspoken cardinal rule uh, not to look up the film and read the facts <laughs> as you're doing I believe it was a blind fight. 
and uh, no and one you ran that by me. Site. Yeah. Uh, okay, I appreciate that, but uh, thank you for the mother fun facts. Uh, Emma, yeah. I believe you went your the entirety of your argument without even mentioning John Travolta. I didn't, you're right. Yeah, and I'm like, what the F? <laughs> so, um, just for that, and, and, and he had an angle on the film, yeah. uh, I'm going with Mike Carlson. That's fair. I'm going with Mike Carlson. Uh, Dan. <laughs> yes. I actually liked Monday's been, pitch, oh. but... Uh... Leroy and I have been talking. <laughs> yes. And we both agreed. I, I yeah. deferred to him, and uh, he convinced me for this very similar reasons to also go with Mike Carlson. Hmm. All right, Mike gets the point. Danielle Radford, what do you... Uh, what, what the polls say? Um, the polls... They're saying Fifty Shades of Grey at 44%, mm, mm. Face Off at 32%, and Mother with, oh, baby, 23%. Thanks, Danielle. Yeah. I would I guess if you're doing a blind I, fight, you might want to check to make sure everyone's seen the movie. <laughs> Which I have. I've seen Mother. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you got to BS your That's way the through the... That's the fun of the blind fight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. through a movie fight's question. Um, have, have, uh, so, uh, Danielle, any memes or any other uh, answers for that question? Um, some memes, but uh, we got a couple of great tweets from uh, at Sarah Wendling said, "Can Millie be Hal's permanent co-host?" Aww. Aww. Um, um, and then at Iron Mike Wilson says, "Why do I feel like the movie fights live green room is just a sleepover at Roth Cornette's place?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, time. I still got about three more questions, so I can make a comment. <laughs> <real quick. laughs> um, oh, about that! Can we get a quick shot of the puppy cam? Quick shot of the puppy cam. Oh. Let's just be. Let's just. Leave Leroy's it. awake now. Strangely, oh. he was sleeping while everyone else was awake, but now he's. Millie. Oh. Oh, hi. <laughs> he oh wants to go see Daniel. Hi. hi. All right. So, uh, Millie, can I ask you a question? Are you ready for the speed round? Uh, <laughs> it's speed round time. Mike and Emma are moving on. Nick, um, you you brought uh, you, you brought the charity today. You brought a lot of uh, humor, but. Uh, I'm afraid you're gonna have to sip this one out. Mike. Already? Yeah, it's, it's three yeah, questions. It's quick yeah, things change. Things change around here. Uh, so it is time for the speed round. Once again, the first player to four points wins. Emma has. Oh, can we correct the board, please? Emma has one point. Emma I has one. one. Yes. Can we correct the board? <laughs> Nick actually managed to get negative one, and that's the only reason why I moved on. Uh, <laughs> There we go. All right, Mike has two, Emma has one. First player to four points, walks out of My here. Goodness. so the tense, Victor. so tense. Um, and uh, the, it works thusly, I'll ask the question. First person to speak goes first, and then you get 20 seconds, 20 seconds, and then 10 second rebuttal, 10 second rebuttal. Cool. Oh, and uh, Danielle Radford, rather than uh, conducting a poll, she will be giving her own thoughts. And Nick, I might come to you for uh, your thoughts. And, uh, yeah, I might and probably just answer anyway. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, all right, here we go. Uh, you guys ready? Sure. Yes. Let's do Let's this. Go. Speed round activate. Who's the best chipmunk? Alvin, Simon, or Theodore? Theodore. I am going to go with Alvin. Okay, we have one for uh, Theodore, one Alvin. Uh, Mike Carlson, you answered first. 20 seconds begins when you speak. All right, Theodore is the everyman of the chipmunks. You have Alvin, and he's cocky and brash. I don't identify with him. We have Simon, who's a nerd, and I am not that. I am Theodore. I'm a lovable guy that likes to eat and likes to loaf around. He is our. He is the way we are in, get into the chipmunks. That's the person that most of the audience identifies with. If Theodore wasn't there, the thing would be completely inaccessible, okay? The other characters are so... All right, 20 seconds begin when you Here's speak. the thing, it is called Alvin and the Chipmunks. So by definition, we do not have any other Chipmunks without Alvin. Yes, I understand that you want to have other relatable characters, but ultimately it is Alvin that is the driving force behind the Alvin and the Chipmunks franchise. He is the leader of the group. He drives the story forward. He wears red. Everybody knows that the main character always wears red. And so for me, that is the best Chipmunk because I always gravitated towards the person that was dressed in red and was... You like narcissists. <laughs> Folks, just because somebody is the leader of group doesn't mean they're the best. Leonardo's not the best Ninja Turtle. It's obviously Raphael, okay? He is the heart of the group. Theodore is the heart of the chipmunks. If it wasn't for Theodore, we would have to have, it would be some... 
Yeah, Theodore, yeah, it, fine, yeah, whatever, but it, but without Alvin, Theodore just exists in space and doesn't do anything. No. He just loafs around. As you say, he's the everyman. He would just sit home and watch Netflix all day. With Alvin, he is a star, and he is out there in the world. Time. All right. You guys have a lot of chipmunk knowledge. Nick, did you have something you wanted to weigh in? Yeah, they're both wrong because it's Simon, because if they were in space, Simon would get them out of that jam. Thank you for that. All right, Danielle Radford, uh, your thoughts. By the way, I just found out Millie, not a fan of the bell. <laughs> Should I, should I, should I do that? We can no, do it's okay. It's, okay. It'll be all right. I'll do, so I'll do a quiet bell. bell. I'll do a quiet bell. Tiny bell. Tiny bell. Uh, Danielle? Oh, gosh. Um, yes. So, again, both really fantastic arguments. Um, I have to say that as soon as Emma, you know, Alvin, it is, the, it is Alvin and the chipmunks. Uh, he is the Beyonce. And so, <laughs> and the leader does wear red. I had to go with Emma's argument. Hmm. All right, that's one. I dare you to say that to Kelly Rowland. That's, that's, uh, one, that's, one, that's one for <laughs> Emma. Uh, Dan Merle. If the question had been who's the most indispensable chipmunk, then I think that Alvin would have won hands down. But I think Mike made a better argument about why Theodore mm -hmm. had better qualities than Alvin besides just being integral to the group. So I'm going with Mike. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I, I'm a little closer in thought to Dan here because uh, mm -hmm. Mike used uh, Theodore as kind of a conduit into the group. The every man. What would I do if I was a part of this team? And uh, does I don't get every every leader wears red. Yeah, there was a time like when I was a kid, a lot of the main characters were red, like the Red Power Ranger. Gotcha. Well, um, <laughs> I, got, I, got go, I got to go. I got to go. Mike Chandler. Mike, no, no. <laughs> Mike gets the point. Mike gets Thank the Wait, point. Chandler wore red all the time? Heather Chandler in Chandler Heather's. from Friends? Chandler no. from Friends wore sweaters. Heather Chandler. <laughs> but I just think of the red shirts the on Star Heathers. Trek and they get uh, they get off uh, nonstop. But this was also during the era of Next Gen and gotcha. Captain Picard wore red. Uh, all right, all right. That's well, true. it's. Wait, sweet. there's a Next Gen Friends? <laughs> Oh uh, on a Loot Crate t-shirt. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it is 3-1. Yeah. This is game point right here. Emma, you need it to keep it going. Mike, you take this, you take the day. <laughs> All right. Better talking pig movie. Charlotte's Web or Babe? Babe. Charlotte's Web. Okay. Babe from Emma. Mike has Charlotte's Web. Emma, 20 seconds begin when you speak. Babe is the story about a charming relationship between a pig and a hardworking farmer. It is about uh, a, a little pig that really renews this man's faith in his own life and his ability to, uh, you know, continue to live the way that he does and it, within a society that's really kind of moving away from farming, honestly. And then, you know, Babe is, is a pig that overcomes a lot of challenges. All right. First of all, who cares about this man? Oh, okay. oh my God, something fell. Oh, oh, oh. What is going on? Stop the clock for a this second. This is not fair. That's okay. The you money is it. trying to whatever, sabotage me. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. Um, who we're cares? Gonna begin. begin uh, right, I don't even now. need. Give me 15 seconds. Who cares about this old man and babe? And babe, we want Charlotte Swept. <laughs> this is a story about friendship, folks. This is a story about friendship in general, not just about one specific thing or the farming industry. Who cares? This is about Charlotte and and, and Wilbur and and what. A friend does for another friend. This is a lesson that you learn as a child that is so much more important than learning about how to irrigate crops. Time. Here's right. the thing, Babe. There's a great friendship story there as well, and both of them have a lot of heartache involved. However, I would like to point out that Babe actually lives. Babe. So. <laughs> whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Time. There is a lesson to learn in about death also. It's not just about friendship, it's about death, which is another thing you have to learn as a child. And also, there's a great sassy character, Templeton the Rat, played by the wonderful Paul Lynn in the art animated version. This makes time. Wow, all right. What a throwdown over the pig movie. I'm very uh, worked Dan up. Merle. That's that kind of round I like to see. I evoke that kind of passion in our competitors. Yes. Uh, I think this one went back and forth. It went back and forth, I think, Mike clinched it for me when he talked about uh, how it teaches you many different kinds <laughs> no, of lessons I tried to go the that you have to learn mm -hmm. as a child <laughs> about so. death. Uh, so I have I have to go with Mike. He, yeah. he turned a negative into a positive. Okay, 1-0 for Mike. <laughs> Danielle Radford. Um, gosh, I, 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 I have to agree. As much as I w was really hoping you were going to go more in on this idea about uh, Babe teaching a farmer how to survive in an industrial <laughs> era, uh. um, <laughs> um, I, I have to agree. Um, yeah. the, you, he very much, Mike brought home the Sesame Street of it all for me. Um, and so, yeah, I have yeah. to go with Mike on this one. That I means agree. Mike Carlson, <laughs> you take it. Mike Carlson yeah. wins today's yeah. movie fights. Yeah. 
Thank um, you, Mike. And uh, Mike, I'll eat a dog treat with you if you'll. If you'll <laughs> yeah, we fun. really just all threw the match, so Mike would have to eat the maximum number of dog treats. These are not. These are not bad. Uh, we eat one of these. No, no, I don't want to eat a dog treat. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna eat a dog treat. Oh god. Oh boy. Oh. Oh my god. It's meatless. <laughs> Mike Carlson, go ahead and plug some stuff. Oh, uh, podcast the ride. It's about theme parks, but let's not worry about my uh -huh. great podcast today. Let's worry the animal the Patreon. Plug the Patreon. Yeah. That's what we're plugging today. Yes, Nick. Um, so awesome to have you here. Hey, and yeah. always great to see you. Great. Ha it's been a while, so thank you for coming in. And please um, talk to us uh, that much more about the Patreon and what you do with fostering animals. Well, look, I was never an animal person. Uh, my wife was the animal person, but when. Uh, Jen Sturger and the Jen, gang at over, Care please. Rescue LA keeps bringing over adorable Yay. five week old kittens. It's not hard to uh, love them. So uh, this organization not only teaches you how to foster them, they bring bring food and and they get them vaccinated and litter and they get them uh, fixed and they do all this stuff so then people can adopt them and then just take care of them the rest <laughs> of the, their lives. Um, yeah. That costs money. Uh, you know, so many of the people watching probably have Patreons as it is. We figured, hey, this is easier. You just click, put as much as you can, and then also if you donate up to a certain amount, you get to name the animal. Like, Aww. this one's Rick Murtaugh, because I oh. donated. Mm -hmm. it. It's Murtaugh. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a great organization. Uh, Jen Sturger and Rebecca and everyone, they work their asses off for it. Um, it's got, well, it, it, it's the thing that made me come back. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and I just want to thank everyone for having me and all of us for doing this. Absolutely. Hell yeah, brother. Despite yeah. this tough exterior, Nick Mundy is such an amazing foster oh. and such a cat person, like a secret cat person. Oh. I'd go over and he would just be covered in a pile of kittens and he would just look so happy. Yeah, I'm borderline <laughs> creepy cat person. So. <laughs> Why yeah. are you covered in them? Yeah. And he loves to give them all like weird names from the 80s. Oh, yeah. Um, classic names. Lance. Mm -hmm. um, what, Lance. If, it, if it's an old cat, it's going to be getting too old for this shit, right? Uh, Emma, uh, yeah. thank you for being here yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for and having thank me. thank you for also fostering yeah. animals. As I say, I have two uh, fosters at my house right now. They're the second uh, pair of kittens. Well, there were three, but one already got adopted that I have uh, fostered fostered for Care Rescue LA and uh, you know one of the things that is so important I think about the work that they do and that that people might not realize as opposed to just getting animals out of the shelter necessarily is that you know these animals are all in foster homes we don't there is no shelter to put them into they're pulling animals out of shelters the yeah. three kittens that uh, that Nick had for a little while and that came to my house like they were going to be euthanized. Yes, wow. Um, and so, but because, you know, Jen and Rebecca and everybody went in and got them out of the shelter and into a home, you're also now ending up with animals that are uh, extremely socialized because they've been living with humans in homes rather mm -hmm. than being stuck in shelters and learning yeah. to be afraid of humans. Let me piggyback that real quick. Um, this little uh, mm. pup right here, Millie, she's 14 years old. I've had her almost a year. She was 13 when I got her. She would have, uh, I mean, I hate to yeah. bring the room down. She would have died in the shelter. Yeah. But Jen helped me find the, the foster community and uh, get this little girl. And she's been a perfect angel yeah. sitting on my lap the oh. whole time. No, no. A perfect pet. Um, you'll, you'll get a perfect pet and you'll save a life and you'll feel good about yourself. And guess what? The animal will make you feel freaking great. Yeah. yeah and, and for some of you guys on the fence all over the country watching this or the world, uh, <laughs> there's rescue ag uh, agencies all over. Yeah. Uh, call them up. Uh, look, you might not be an animal person, but you want to show people that you're a human being and maybe impress some girls or some gals <laughs> with some cute this Instagram doesn't... pictures. No, hold on. We're talking to a certain <laughs> sect of people that need to hear this. Okay, say uh, you want to show that you're more than just uh, one thing. You want to, you're you a well-rounded human being. What's better than to have a short-term foster? Because it's not forever. It's a week or two or three. And then, hey, I have all these cute photos. Wouldn't I be a great person to uh, socialize with? <laughs> uh, this is a great way to do that. It will definitely be good for your Instagram Account. Emma's right, they will get you laid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I think Emma said the, the greatest thing to me, though, is she was like, you know, Jen, I think I'm ready to foster. When she came to me and she was ready to foster, she's like, I'm ready to foster because she goes, I think I need them as much as they need me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's just such an important part of rescue work, you know, right as you were at this part in your life, how were you wanted a friend, a, yeah. fur, a fur friend. A fur friend. Exactly. And, and I think great. that yeah. they add just as much to your life as you do to theirs. True story. I uh, was... Tell us again where we can find that Patreon. It's at patreon.com care rescue LA. There it is. Yeah. It's right there on the screen. Oh, and Mike Carlson is a... Uh... 
I have a rescue dog too. His name is Edwin, and I almost hit him with my cart. <laughs> And then we took him to a shelter and immediately regretted it because I was like, oh, we should have just kept him. And then we, I went what back a couple days and got him. That's yeah. a nice story. Mm -hmm. I also you. have two uh, cats of my own, and watching them interact with my foster kittens is literally one of the most joyous wow. uh, activities of my entire life. That's amazing. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. Uh, Dan Merle, um, <laughs> I mean, what can you say? What can you say? I love that there's a cat on Nick's shoulder. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is how yeah. I work now. <laughs> no, I, I am a step, I am a happy no. stepfather, adopted father to two rescue kitties uh, nice. who are wonderful and everything they said and then some. Animals oh. make your life better. They do. They really do. They do. Uh, Danielle, when are you going to adopt a corgi? <laughs> um, it's And also, I love that you mentioned you're not going to bring it down. I appreciated that at least that time you acknowledge it before you talk about yes. it. <laughs> we remember the corgi incident. <laughs> Um, I did, as, as soon as I can. Yes. Um, as soon as I can. I'm like literally having my boyfriend like text me and talk me down today because I can't <laughs> take home an animal today. Uh, it, I, and, and it's cute overload up in here. Kind of uh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> no. Nick, Kiki Amazing. thinks you need to wash your, um, your hat. So no, it's fine. It's a Foster, hat. adopt, be kind to animals and each other. I want to thank everybody. Mike Carlson, uh, nicely done, but Emma, Nick, amazing to have both of you. And uh, thank you, uh, Billy Biz and Chris in the booth. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, tune in next week to Movie Fights. Bye-bye. Bye. That was for the championship. <laughs>